All right, so we got what is Warhammer 40k timeline of the 40k Lords videos by Bricky. Let's get right to the video. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, a 31 minute video. Empire of man, a backwards carcass of an empire comprised of many devoted forces, gigantic robot knights, religious machine cultists, and incredibly heavily armored women most likely with sweltering abs and one must know what those abs taste like <laughs> what am My i watching gamer sups flavor is here sweet six pack has arrived oh my a goodness gracious and refreshing cherry pineapple blend play the sound oh my god that's a class that's like classic uh, sounds that youtube yes, used to use back then Ricky's official gamer subs flavor is here sweet six <laughs> not only in regular energy mode but also in caffeine free the cherry pineapple flavor is not the kind of flavor that just smacks you in the face it is light it is refreshing and it's one of those things where you sip it and you go not bad and next thing you know you were having your fourth refill the same day and fourth is refill is crazy now. though wait is, is this no caffeine description use code bricky for 10 percent off your entire this is my order. first ever bricky video just for this but for oh. everything you buy and i'm not dumb <laughs> if you buy any of these tubs regular caffeine free of my sweet six pack flavor you will get a muscle girl 32 ounce shaker yo what's with him and the girls free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only a couple thousand of those shakers. So get it while supplies <laughs> last. I cannot believe we finally have this, but I, I told everyone, like, once you find out the flavor, you'll be like, yeah, that tracks. And damn straight does it track. Sweet six pack available. Is it like strawberry now. lemonade? Code Bricky, link in the description. Wow, that was actually a nice promo. <laughs> <sighs> nice promo. That was nice. That was really nice promo. I actually really enjoyed that promo. Wow, I might pick, I might get some. You never know. The age of knowledge and enlightenment has ended. Uh -oh. The age of darkness has begun. Okay. Roughly sixty million years ago, there existed aliens, and these aliens <laughs> lived short, <laughs> painful lives. They look like they me. Belonged to radiation stricken worlds and often died of various cancers before the age of 30. These aliens, the Necron tier, looked up to the stars and found extreme beings of real power. Beings with the ability to create life. The old ones of the galaxy. The they old asked ones. These old ones for help. Please cure us of our ailments. To which the old ones said, piss off so the necron team <laughs> gathered together and did the sensible thing they declared war upon these old beings and were promptly beaten into the dirt back to their short painful lives in the world of warhammer there is a hell this hell is not like you and i know it it's more of an afterlife a place where dead souls end up this place has many names the empyrean the sea of souls the immaterium and the ether but mostly mm. we just call it the warp while you and i know of hell as a place of horrors and punishment the warp isn't really that not in the beginning it's energy but th the kind of energy formed from thought and soul psychic energy where the dead souls of people end up in a place that is impossible to understand no laws of reality exist like time is merely a suggestion and it is not something that can be braved easily the warp would be like sailing the ocean in a pirate movie to jump from your ship would be certain death to stay in the sea for too long on your boat could drive a man mad and there are many dangerous things lurking in those oh so it is yes, hell then the sea is not evil it's simply it's is. oh okay Mostly. i understand there I... are more <laughs> beings in those worlds, areas that you do not sail towards this would be known as the realm of chaos yeah the that sounds that sounds intimidating in the warp as a special area led by three chaos gods corn the god of combat murder and slaughter 
with a pile of skulls taken in his name. Zeech, god of change, mystery, and deceit. A confusing paradox of lies, schemes, and sorceries. Oh, and wow. Nurgle, god of rot, pestilence, and Genshin impact. All oh, things my. rot in the end. <laughs> and Grandfather Nurgle is waiting for you with open arms. These oh, gods I can see. ruled their respective realm I can in the see. world, sending their many followers against each other in the great game to be the most powerful of all the gods. So the warp exists hell is real parallel to our galaxy with the realm of chaos and its gods fighting for control but there are also gods of real space gods of the normal world too they're called katan and they eat stars you think god stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created. These star gods saw the plight of our poor Necron tier and how the old ones cast them aside and said, you know what? You guys want immortality? Oh, we will make it happen. We are the <laughs> gods of the tangible, of real space. We can give you a cure. So then they ate all their souls. Um, hello? And turned them into robotic automaton feasting on their souls and leaving a, a hollow shell of an intelligence left that is technically immortal. With the power of an entire that species sounds horrible, souls, though. they turned their new robotic slaves on the old ones and hunted them to extinction. The Necron tier, now the soulless, undying Necrons, got their wish at the price of their souls. But we can count the number of kind gods on an amputated hand oh wow At the time the selfish star gods turned on each other fighting one another for more chances at glory and power with this the leader of the necrons zarek the silent king the man who doomed his species when he accepted this deal waited planned by oh he's calculated until he sees the perfect moment and turned his legions of undead citizens against the star gods uh -oh. gods cannot be killed but they can be broken so Zarek broke the star gods into thousands of pieces and locked them away in vaults taking their free will away as they did today hit him with the master roshi just locked them in a bottle basically pokemon to be used as weapons <laughs> yeah. in the future yeah. he man, they master he master he master roshi them he, he master Roshi with his perfect memory exiled himself for his sins flying out to the darkness between galaxies to atone for what he had done oh, this wow. entire situation the genocide of the old ones and the rebellion of Zarek will go down in history as the war in heaven it is oh. the most brutal war the galaxy has ever seen and ever will see this was a conflict that took an entire galaxy spanning species and pitted them against gods that ate stars the necrons <laughs> rather crippled from you know the war in heaven decide to go to sleep in gigantic tomb worlds on various planets until the upstart species of the galaxy died out okay and so turns out when you have a war that lasts tens, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. it involves the genociding of multiple species, yeah. the old ones of the galaxy, and the consumption of souls from an entire race, <laughs> yeah. the warp gets a little wacky. Yeah. You know, oh, if you it's filled up. And it was nice <laughs> and calm. <laughs> it's filled up. Corn is over there splashing about, so you don't really go <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> Nurgle has explosive diarrhea, so you don't really go in that direction either. But don't you can still tell me get in the pool. The, the pool war still got full. Turns out when you add a couple trillion souls to that kiddie pool, oh. it'll make the waves a little more turbulent. Oh. And <laughs> turns out a lot of them like to pick a side. Nurgle, Zinch, or Corn. So the ones calmly <laughs> warp. The once relaxing kiddie pool has now been bloated. A million years of it war got will certainly make corn, god of murder and slaughter, more powerful. <laughs> so a million years of war will probably make Zinch, god of deception and change, a little more powerful. And good god, a million years of war will make Nurgle, god of decay, oh, just the tiniest bit yeah, more his teeth is decay. Now entering that kiddie pool is no longer fun, it's dangerous. The warp is now a problem. Hell is resembling hell a lot closer to what we imagined it originally. The yeah. sea of souls and the realm of chaos are now intertwined. So hell so is actually hell now. The okay. Galaxy, then a species that won't need to deal with that. Uh oh. 
The age of the elder. Uh oh. The Eldar. Eldar. I'm sorry. Elves. They Eldar. The traits that you probably think of when you He's think dripped of out. Elves. Hold up. Tall, slender, pointy ears. A bit more androgynous looking, no matter what DeviantArt will tell you. And a bit stronger on, on the... <laughs> emotional side the old oh, ones snap. as i mentioned could create life and when they were getting you know absolutely bodied <laughs> by the katan and the necrons they made some new races to try to help them one oh, of them okay. was the eldar it didn't save them but they're here now anyway oh and also the orcs but uh they're busy right now <laughs> <laughs> the eldar are a particularly psychically powerful race so they okay. were really adept at being able to handle the new turbulent warp of chaos and good at killing necrons hence why they went to sleep being psychically gifted is basically like being a wizard but you get your wizard powers from hell this is called being a psyker and basically oh if you God. want to do cool wizard shit like lightning from your hands or reading oh, like someone's mind you can do that but you siphon the energy to do that from the warp luckily oh, wow. the eldar are very good at handling this without too many negative effects because you know summoning power from the sea of souls with the new chaos <laughs> friends can be a bit of an issue yeah it's like eldar, it's like a migraine or two i understand see, what's really cool i understand it also awful about warhammer is that most developed species travel long faster than light distances by going through that warp they create a tear in reality to unreality and move through it faster than light travel <laughs> cringe we go through hell itself to deliver your packages <laughs> for those of you who play minecraft you know how the nether is like a yeah. pocket dimension so moving 10 spaces in the nether is actually moving something like a thousand in the real world yeah. that's basically what warp travel is. okay it's okay just much like in the nether, there are a lot of things that want to kill you. The of course, Eldar it's the nether. found a way to do so in between realities. Not regular reality, not the warp, something else. A purgatory of sorts. A fabricated psychic realm that allowed them to travel without fearing the negative effects of the warp. The Eldar were the perfect fit for the new galaxy. Oh. And they took it with open arms and pointy ears. The empire of the Eldar spread everywhere. And it spread all the way until now, the 21st century. That's right. <laughs> While you are watching NPC streams on TikTok... <laughs> The space elves were ruling the galaxy, <laughs> and they did so for quite a long period of time. Oh, wow, okay. Rise of humanity. Hey, that's us. The 21st century came and went. Humanity grew and grew all under the nose of their elf overlords. At this time, humans advanced your classic sci-fi style way. We began to expand, colonize our solar we system, terraformed our planets, created new and more powerful machines and starships. Nice. The age of Terra, also okay. known as Earth, but we call it Terra here, was here and existed between the 21st century all the way until the 15th millennia. Not much oh, is wow. known about this time. Not much needs to be known. Humanity grew up, sought the stars. It's classic. Then okay. came the years between 15,000 and 25,000, the age of technology, or to some, the dark age of technology. This is when humanity reached a new apex of technological understanding. When you think of sci-fi, there's a lot of things you can think of. Star Trek, maybe Star Wars style, you yeah. can go cyberpunk dystopian. Yeah. The age of technology was deep sci-fi. Like a scientific prowess that fringed Well, like, magic. like robots this having babies? This is when the first ever psychers began showing up in humanity. Individuals with the genetic mutation to be able to access the warp and then because of that travel through it Humanity was no longer constricted to their early ways of travel with warp travel. They could go anywhere in the galaxy They equipped ships that does not sound good Gigantic AI machines with everything you would ever that need does to know not about sound mankind, good and sent them out on colony ships to expand their influence across the galaxy Oh no, and this this was truly the golden age of humanity and with every golden age there is, is a, a fall. Yep, yep. while the new human upstarts of the galaxy were reaching new levels of technology and prowess the eldar were engaging in debauchery <laughs> what happens when a species has everything you can produce unlimited food out of 
Nothing. Did I get Your bored? For farmers and workers, gone. You have dominated the stars and have created a fast travel system that doesn't rely on the dangers. I think of they the get world. bored. You have nothing else to do. They're you bored. Have no struggles. No problems. Yep. yep. And they're feel bored. As if there is nowhere wow. else to go. Well. You begin to experiment. Oh Neil my! Started harmless enough. You know, you you take a serious interest in your species. Culture. These you bums were so bored. Paintings, poems, plays. These are Eldar elves. Remember, their their oh, emotions no. are heightened, more powerful than us humans. So your plays get louder. They start to push on, on the limits of your hearing ability. Your music becomes different, more deranged. Oh, it pushes no. the boundaries of what is. Art. The visual spectacle of art becomes more bizarre, more delusional, more eccentric. Were that and cracked in the head? In a very important sense. Touch. Pornography is one thing. Brothels is another. What if they all mixed? What if your brothels were part of your art and music? And what if those became more deranged? The boundaries. Oh no, we're getting too deep. We're getting too deep. We're actually getting too deep. Oh my god, my head. Shattered. Next thing you know, murder is commonplace and often mixed with the art, music, and sex. Pain is a common byproduct of entertainment. Whatever sensation you can have must be increased, must be enhanced, must be taken So we're that the numbed out that we got to increase everything? Into a nightmarish realm of debauchery and excess, with the worst of it taking place in a city in the Wembley, oh, a black market for these Jesus. kinds of heinous acts known as Kamara. Some Eldar saw the writing on the wall, saw what was happening to their species, oh my God. how far they had slipped. So they boarded continent-sized starships called craft worlds and left their empire, seeking a more enlightened, calmer existence. See, yeah, I like that. Some, those in Kamara, pushed it to even greater heights, relishing the pain and torments they inflicted on those around them. All during this, the warp. The yin to the yang of the world uh -oh. was fed, fed by these emotions, by the psychic power of the elder. The hell grew stronger. In these depraved the hell grew on stronger. A galactic scale. And just like that, Eldar ended. Slanesh, the fourth chaos god, was birthed into existence and consumed the souls of 90% of the Eldar population. Those that fled were spared the worst of it, and those in the webway and Kamara were able to stave off the pull of Slanesh so long as they continued to commit horrid acts of torture and violence. But what? for the majority of the Eldar, their empire died with Slanesh's birth. The new fourth chaos god she who thirsts the god of unspeakable excess of pleasure pain hedonism and perfection had been born oh no this is actual that's the actual hell empire came the ruin of humanity slanesh's birth sent storms in the warp across the galaxy making travel between stars bro Sines, whatever your name is go ahead somewhere bro classic AI go ahead somewhere bro staple in these sci-fi settings humanity began to suffer the age of strife now planets that relied on intergalactic travel were completely cut off oh geez Long they're done messages normally sent through the warp were snuffed out if you were a planet that was great at, at mining stuff but couldn't get food geez well, you eat. know that movie about the rugby players in the mountains oh, yeah eat the rocks because of these insane warp storms and fluctuations psychers began to appear among the human population a bit more often now this initially had them hunted down as witches because that's pretty common in this setting but some deemed it right to protect them unfortunately for those people psychers because they open a gateway to the warp don't really know how to use their powers well and they kind of attract demons who then force their way through the psyker as a conduit of sorts and begin to slaughter the population of your planet the age of strife was a catastrophic period of time for humanity and set back their progress tenfold over the not one not two but five thousand year period during this time the age of humanity that we know began to form worlds equipped with large mechs for <laughs> agriculture <began laughs> we're just now getting to this to defend from alien and demonic <laughs> invaders over 5,000 years this became a custom and tradition dubbing them as night worlds a feudal society of honor bound knights and gigantic robots that uphold the chivalric code to defend their worlds and honor a group of individuals on mars after 
radioactively bombing their planet to become inhospitable to human life, ran their entire lives underground on the few life support systems keeping them alive. Those technicians who could work on the machines and keep them operational were revered and over 5,000 years went from skilled members of society to full-blown priests. The cult mechanicus, or tech priests of Mars, formed in the ashes of the red planet with a religious fervor and doctrine. So the, the tech geeks the became God. priests. And on Earth, or Terra, techno-barbarian wow. tribes waged war across the planet in a Mad Max style of blood and gore. Until finally, a mysterious man who lived in the shadows of Terra for millennia finally revealed himself to the populace. His name was the, the uh oh. He deemed himself the emperor of mankind. Where did he come from? Courage and honor. Why is he 10 feet tall and the most powerful psyker of all of mankind? I don't know. Why is he basically immortal? I don't know. Bye. Where'd Cotton Eye Joe go? Who knows? But he's here, and he isn't happy with all of you ripping up Terra. So he began the Unification Wars, where he and a very early version of the famous Space Marines, uh -oh. Thunder Warriors, Thunder Warriors okay. Terra under a single banner with blood. Then, after taking over Earth, he reunited the Thunder Warriors into the fucking dirt. This is where we get the Imperium of Man, also known as the Imperium. The okay, new faction yeah. headed by the Emperor of Mankind with a treaty signed with the cult Mechanicus on Mars to spread out and reunite humanity after the catastrophic Age of Strife. But first, the Emperor is going to need some smaller versions of himself. 20 of, course. of them. 18 of them, I meant. Gene-crafted sons of the strongest human to ever live. All of them possess unparalleled oh, he looks like Thor. power, intelligence, formidable strength and size. A real powerful force to unite humanity and stop the chaos of the current galaxy. Speaking of chaos, you ever seen that image of that guy? It's like throwing the baby. I've never seen that before. That's never. Happens. The chaos gods intervened and grabbed the 18 Primarch gestation pods and yeeted them across the galaxy at a whim everywhere they could possibly go. A galactic game of keep away. So the Emperor Bro got sent to the Pluto. Back. So begins the Great Crusade. A crusade across the stars to reunite not just humanity, but the Emperor with his fallen sons. <laughs> the first to be found was Horus. Isn't that chaplain, right? One of the strongest and most noble sons. The emperor carried with him a oh, legion of newly crafted warriors with genetic material made from their Primarch father. These are the newly made uh -oh. space marines. Space marines. For Horus, his were the Luna Wolves. And as the Emperor continued on his great crusade, he found more and more of his sons, reuniting them with their individual Space Marine legions. Lehman Russ, the cunning hunter with the Space Wolves. Rogel Dorm, the Phalanx. Let me see if I recognize anybody. Where's Titus at? Where's the goat? The Barbarian, the very angry with his world eaters. Fulgrim, the perfect with his Emperor's children. And Jagatai Khan, the swift the stoic and his white scars. Those were just some of the 18, and one by one his lost Primarch sons were returned to him, and their Space Marine legions returned to them. The Great Crusade saw humanity once again reconquer the stars, returning worlds of humanity back to the Imperium, oh, nice. killing any and all who stood against their noble crusade. But in the years of the 31st millennia, uh -oh. treachery, would break I knew it. all apart. I knew it. Horus Heresy. Horus, the Emperor's most beloved and favored sons, named War Master for the Crusade, succumbed to the power of chaos and daddy issues. All because uh -oh. of that bastard Erebus. Yo, fuck Erebus. Oh. Slowly, Horus would become corrupted. <laughs> turning the emperor's sons against him this oh, begins the no. most pivotal moment in our story and the one that has like 50 books written about it the horus heresy half nine oh wait i've seen that guy before turned against the emperor and the following years were a bloody battle for the throne of terra wow the emperor originally was working on a special webway project just like the eldar to make faster than light travel significantly easier and safer really improve humanity to allow them to conquer i mean horace said nope never mind of the warp well this big red idiot named magnus kind of blew a hole into that 
literally and figuratively. So oh. Big E over there is stuck on a gigantic golden throne, holding back the oncoming rush of demons and powering the Astronomicon. Basically a big north star for people who are sailing in the warp to help them navigate. Oh, okay. Horus Heresy saw many loyalist and traitor legions pitted against each other in a bloody war until it reached Terra itself. Horus, unable to break through the lines and with time running out, made a gambit and opened his ship up to be boarded. The Emperor took this challenge quickly allowing someone else to take control of the throne as he teleported his way onto Horus's flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. The Emperor, unable to truly kill his most beloved son, changed his mind right quick when Horus strangled the life out of his other son, Sanguinius. Oh, wow. I'm sure you've seen this image at some point. The Emperor then said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. And proceeded oh. to psychically blast Horus into complete oblivion, killing not only his body, but also his soul. The Horribly from this duel, the Emperor is returned to the Golden Throne in order to keep the demons at bay and power the Astronomicon, because without it, humanity would be flying blind. There he sits slowly dying from his wounds and the strain of powering the golden throne. The only thing keeping him alive is feeding upon the souls of 1,000 psychers every single day. This was 10,000 years ago. We are now in the 41st millennium, modern day. Warhammer 40,000. Oh, it makes sense now. The Emperor remains on his throne. The Imperium is a rotting co wait, 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 wait. 40,000. Oh, I gotta do the math real quick. 40,000, 1,000 souls a day. Was it, was it 40,000 years later or? Oh my goodness gracious. Marcus. That's a lot of souls. Xenophobic Brothers, that's a lot of that's a lot of souls. I can't lie to you. Wanting to be seen as a god. Over the span of 1 million worlds, the ecclesiarchy, the church of the emperor is spread throughout. Inquisitors with unparalleled power root out any sign of heresy or lack of devotion to their That god is a lot emperor. of souls. The other half of the traitor legions move about as chaos space marines, raiding and pillaging the imperium while the loyalist half does their best to keep the empire alive. All throughout this, they must endure orc invasions, Eldar trickery, the reawakening of the Necron race and the great devourer. The new Tyranid threat from the darkness between galaxies that has he just stick his tongue out. He's a menace. <sighs> the theme of Warhammer 40,000 is regression and intolerance. Every major faction of Warhammer has had an empire that spanned the galaxy only to be crushed back to a hollow shell of what they once were due to their own failings. Culture, the arts, personal freedom, religious tolerance, the simple possibility that alien life might not want to kill us is considered heretical and is often met with a pistol to the head. There oh, is wow. no time for these things. All there is time for is worship of the God Emperor and a million wars to be fought. To be a human in the 41st millennia is 99% of the time to live a horrible existence. To be one of trillions of other humans across a million worlds throughout the galaxy. A galaxy where Just AI in war. is outlawed so humans are repurposed and lobotomized to become slaves. A place where lack of devotion is met with death. And if you even have devotion there is a good chance the threats to the galaxy chaos and aliens will kill you anyway War you know what hey, hey, world and, where you revel in being bad in this there universe bro I'll, I'll die happily let's just say that every faction i don't care bro shade of evil because playing the bad guys is always more fun and my friend ah. you have a selection so pick up that last gun soldier you and the other three million men and women in this single deployment on this single <laughs> world in this single battle will now 
now show them the might of the God Emperor. No, nope. hey, I'll be at the back. <laughs> has killed 99% of the alien populations in this galaxy. Unfortunately for you, soldier, you're fighting the final 1%. May the Emperor be with us. Glory to the first man. He's going to do the courage and honor. Or in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Wow. Listen. I'm gonna be honest with you, that was that was one hell of a video. Thank you, everyone. I hope I have helped teach you about Warhammer. If you, you are did. a brand new person and you want to get a bit more about the world, there are multiple books that do a great job at showing I know. how the entire universe operates. For the most part, Warhammer is a setting, and often stories are told in that setting with a Warhammer coat of paint. Gaunt's Ghosts is Band of Brothers, but Warhammer. It's honestly one of my number one recommendations for new people. Assassinorum Kingmaker is an assassin novel involving those night worlds. This is Mission <coughs> Impossible, but Warhammer. Bloodlines okay. is Blade Runner, but Warhammer. And okay. the list goes on and on. If I had to recommend a brand new novel for a first time Warhammer enjoyer, these are the four I would recommend. Horus Rising, Caiaphas Kane, First and Only Gaunt's Ghost, and Infinite and the Divine. They are all fantastic novels, and they will get you acquainted with the world without needing to know too much. Thank you all okay. so much for watching this video. Get yourself a Gamer Subs flavor. Enjoy the new <laughs> sweet six pack. And if you're curious and you want, you know, just a little Lord, you can find him in the description as well. You get the merch. Store, Orchid8.com. Thank you for watching, and may the God Emperor be with us. Come on. Bro. Obviously, you're a skater. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. This was one hell of a video. Um, As a person who didn't really know anything about, like, Warhammer, I know a lot now. The thing is with this guy right here, uh, I think his name is Bricky. The thing is with him, bro, he explained it like it was such in, like, a entertaining way that, like, you un – it was like he, it was like he was, like, telling, like, a story. You can almost, like, even, like – Without even the images, you can almost like close your eyes and just like listen to what he's saying and like imagine it in a way. And I can't lie to you, I like this a lot. I, I'm definitely subscribed to his channel though. I don't know if I'm gonna buy like the listen, listen, listen. I don't know if I'm gonna like you know buy like the drink or whatever. Listen, and if I do buy the drink, I might have to like you know put like a cover around it or something. I I don't want I don't want nobody looking at me. Crazy. <laughs> I don't want nobody, I don't want nobody looking at me crazy when I'm drinking out of this. They like yo like what you got on the, what you got on here like what you drinking like. I don't want nobody looking at me crazy, but, um, you know, I like the way he did the ad and stuff like that. Like, bro, he's a really entertaining guy right here, bro. Uh, a lot of people was that was definitely recommending me, uh, you know, to watch this guy for, like, uh, Warzone. I said Warzone. Oh, my God. Ding dong. A lot of people were, uh, were really uh, recommending me, recommending me to uh, watch this guy for um, Warhammer 40K lore. And I was actually looking for, like, not the perfect Warhammer uh, 40K lore video, but I was looking for like a like a lore video to the point where it wasn't too long, but at the same time, like I can actually learn like something. And to be honest with you, bro, he did it in like the best way. It was very entertaining. It was very funny in a way. But at the same time, like, um, hey, bro, he's a really good storyteller. I can't lie to you, man. Comment down below what I think about this. And uh, I definitely know a lot about Warhammer right now. So um, I'm still a, listen. I'm still a new booty. I'm still a newbie at this game at, bro at this franchise it's not even just a game at this point at this franchise at this at bro at this at, the, at at this legacy this is this is a whole legacy at this point make sure you guys like the video subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy i'm gonna put uh break his channel in the description down below and uh see you guys have some out